Well, West Tigers fans, our boys, they went up to Brisbane and just ran out of steam. They came out of the blocks too slow, almost came back into the game, bar a controversial decision by the referee. We'll review that game tonight and also pay tribute to Keith Golden Boots Barnes. Here's another episode of the West Life Podcast. Welcome in to a, another episode of the West Life Podcast. I am your host, Josh Barnett. We are presented by Holman Barnes Group. Of course, half that name. A very sad day for half of the namesake of Holman Barnes Group. We'll get to our tribute to Keith Gold Boots Barnes soon. Uh, please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, in those profile pages, or if you can go to West Tigers without the S, you can find the link to all of our stuff, including our sponsors, including uh, Chase Bet as well. If you want to sign up to Chase Bet, gamble responsibly there. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Westlife if you want to support and take part in the show. Shouts to the dozens of you tuning in. I can see you all coming in. Comments coming on as well on the YouTube stream. Please like and subscribe. Even if you're listening back on the audio, go to YouTube, give us a subscribe and a like on there. We're trying to get the numbers up to the 1,000 mark by the end of the season. Uh, Yeah, let's go to the boys now. We'll start with Mr. Thompson. How are you this evening? Yeah, g'day, Josh. G'day, Rob. G'day, everyone uh, watching or listening. I'm pretty good tonight. Thanks, mate. Just a nice chill day today. Um, Obviously, some very sad news to come out of the day, which has affected uh, the whole community, which is absolutely devastating. But uh, yeah, looking forward to the show tonight. And Mr. Bashara, you knew Keith Keith Barnes personally uh, through your family. So a very sad start um to the morning obviously the news broke this morning of the passing of the balmain great uh tell us a little bit about what keith barnes meant to you uh good evening boys good evening everyone out there look it's a it's a really sad day um in balmain tigers history anyway uh you know, Keith Barnes meant a lot to me personally. He was he was great friends with my dad. You know, he, he spoke at the funeral. He, he at my dad's funeral. He organised the Balmain players. You know, to, to carry the coffin that day and stuff like that. So our our, our ties go you know very deep. Um, in terms of what he did for Balmain, look in the ninety two year history, Balmain have had some wonderful sons, but I think Keith Barnes is the greatest son you know the club's ever had. Uh, he did it all on the field, playing, coaching, uh, off the field as an administrator, uh, whether it was, you know, secretary, uh, manager or, or later on chief executive. Uh, he's just an icon of the game. Uh, probably the, the best word to describe him, if you had to say one word, is gentleman. He, he really was a gentleman. Uh, but he embodied all the things that I love about Balmain people, I love about the supporters and the, and the players and... You know, if, if you if you see a Balmain player or ex-player or even just a supporter or anyone, you haven't seen him for 20 years, you just kick on like you've just seen him yesterday, like you've known him all your life. And Keith Barnes was just part of that beautiful 80s era. Um, you know, the first I'd ever heard of Keith Barnes was when he was a commentator in, in the Amco Cup in the mid-70s. So I only knew him as a commentator. And obviously, I only got to know him personally through his friendship with my dad. Uh, later on and and he he was he really held the place together uh we had a lot of success you know from about 1983 onwards uh to the late 80s um you know which unfortunately we had a couple of runners up uh grand finals but you know he was he was in charge you know when we won three midweek competitions in 1976 1985 1989 uh had a wonderful career for balmain you know played 14 seasons from 1955 to 1968 uh, 67 was meant to be his last season. He was captain coach that year. And then in 68, 
the Balmain Tigers got a lot of injuries, so he came out of retirement, played a few games. Uh, he did it all, guys. He, he he played for City First, New South Wales, Australia. Uh, actually, captain coach Australia in 1960. Uh, just did it all, and I, and I think you know how he's held in a stead, in in you know esteemed company by our history is the way the fact that he is named you know as the name of our sponsors Holman Barnes Group like West Ashfield. Mm. They've got two two great Keiths, uh, Keith. Yappy Holman, who was a wonderful West Magpie, he was, he was actually a life member of, of West while he was still a player, um, was in the team of the century, just like Keith Barnes. So Holman Barnes are two of the most respected names, you know, in our history. So that's that's the level of endearment that Keith Barnes had and, and certainly Keith Holman has as well. Uh, it's just it's just a sad loss, man. Like, you know, I never saw him play, at least I don't think I saw him play. If I was one or two and mum and dad took me to a game, I, I might have seen him play, but I didn't know what I was doing. I was probably chewing on a dummy. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, like you just think legends are never going to die and, and you know, they, they live on forever in our hearts, but it's just a really sad day and it just, you know, brings back some good memories and some bad memories and, you know, obviously like, you know, he meant a lot to me and he certainly meant a lot to my family. Uh, but yeah, it's just, just I didn't even know he was sick, so that's kind of why mm. it was a little bit of a shock this morning. But um, you know, it, it is it is what it is. He had a, a long and wonderful life. Um, he was eighty nine years of age. Coincidentally, like Josh, what a, what a what an age to have eighty nine. Like eighty nine is just so synonymous with the Balmain yeah. history for the wrong reasons, and so is this. Um, but look, my my absolute deepest condolences to his family. He he was the best. He really was. I, I mean, they they. Maybe there are people that are the equivalent of Keith Barnes, but there was no one better. Yeah, obviously you mentioned that you yourself too young to remember him playing. Even my my parents too young uh, were only born in the mid sixties. So my grandfather is who would always speak so highly. Uh, I, if I had a dollar for every time that my grandfather told me about the penalty goals that he would kick. I swear he said like, the distance would get longer and longer. I reckon every time my pa would tell the story, but it'd be like 60, 60 metres, he'd kick a penalty goal at Leichhardt Oval, just unbelievable with the with the boot. And, yeah, my grandfather spoke so highly of him. And for a player, yeah, for so long ago that he played, like the 60s now are what literally nearly – 60 years, what 69 uh, is what 55 50, years ago, 55 years ago. So, pushing 60 years ago, and he's still, yeah, renowned. Like, there's only a certain amount of players from that long ago that are still remembered, and he's definitely one of them. And obviously, as yeah, the Balmain um, heritage that you and I are, he's like you said, he's the number one, he's our sponsor, Holman Barnes Group, he's half the name. So, Absolute legend, and the, for those up on the screen, there's a photo of me. I actually was proud to get a photo with him. Uh, I think that was at the grand final dinner. I think it was just pre-COVID. I think it was 2019, and I was keen to uh, take a photo and send it to my grandfather to show that I got a photo with Keith, Keith Barnes. Um, yeah, and then my grandfather passed away a couple of years. Not long after that, so... Uh, if there is a place that you go after you pass away, I hope Pa's up there, um, yeah, shaking hands with Keith just Barnes. A, just a cool trivia a fact, too. Cool trivia fact, Josh, and I, I mentioned it today when we were talking to Channel 7, is a lot of people don't know that, uh, obviously, Keith Barnes has got a grandstand at Leichhardt near the entrance, which everyone knows about as you walk into the left from the Mary Street entrance. But we've also got the Latcham Robertson stand, which is the main grandstand, and Norm Latcham Robinson is the guy that actually got Keith Barnes to Balmain. So I think that's pretty cool that the guy that got Keith Barnes to Balmain, they've actually got both got grandstands named after them. So little, little so piece where of is he from? But, uh, he was born in Wales and he was and he they his family migrated right. to the south coast. So um yeah, they, he he played for Wollongong and he actually played I, I stand corrected, but I think he played for Wollongong as a halfback against the great British team that came out to Australia. So he wasn't—he wasn't—he right. wasn't, he wasn't a huge man, but by by any stretch of the imagination, mm. he was just you know, back in those days. Players weren't that big, um, but no. you know, there's there's no doubt in terms of you know, however you want to call the goal kicks, whether you want to call them toe pokes or front on kickers, 
he's the best kicker ever and he was the best long kicker ever and it was a different ball and it was a leather ball and you know they didn't always have sand in those days you had to dig dig into the ground and dig your heel in and kind of make a bit of a mound yourself and and he could boot him from you know five or six yards of the other side of halfway and Balmain were blessed to have some really great goal kickers like obviously we had I think the best long distance around the corner kicker in Ross Conlon I think we had the best mm toe-poking uh, goal kicker in, in Keith Barnes. But, uh, and then yeah, look, just brought, up a, a, as well. brought, up, brought a lot of memories today. But just, uh, you know, the, the tributes that I've seen on social media are, are really beautiful. And, and you know, he without him in the 80s, like, you know, we, we were nothing. He, he got so many good players. We had so many good players in that team and he kept them together. And he still got, you know, players of the ilk of Gary Schofield and Ellery Hanley and, you know, signed... Frank Stanton, when he was national coach, he, he came back and coached Balmain from, what, 81 to 86. And then you got Warren Ryan in, you know, from 88 to 90. So he was always making moves and, and he was just, you know, even, even I, I tell a funny story, like when Steve Roach got suspended, we, we had a playoff in 1988 for fifth spot against Penrith, which we won. But Steve Roach uh, committed a swinging arm on someone and got four weeks and, Keith Barnes had it planned to get, you know, blocker overseas and serve the four games playing for an English club. Like, just anything he could do to get Steve Roach mm. to play in the 88 grand final. Obviously, the the ARL at the time stopped that and, and didn't allow it. But he was <laughs> just a very forward thinker, uh, just great administrator, great player, great coach, you know, great servant to Balmain as a, as a player and, and as an administrator. And, and he's just a huge... Huge loss. I, I I don't think there'll ever be a bigger loss for the club, and it's just a really sad day for Balmain. Period. Absolutely, and um, like I said, is half the name of our major sponsor in Holland Barnes Group. So West Ashfield, the best place to watch the game live and loud. I did just that on when did we play the Dolphins Saturday night. Tr- uh, tried the new Shanghai Knights uh, Chinese uh, dumpling place and. Didn't realize until I got there, you can actually order your food and get your food and sit in front of the big screen while you have your succulent Chinese meal and watch the footy. So, um, yeah, a couple of times had to spit my rice across the table because I was yelling at the referee. But nonetheless, it was a great meal at West Ashfield. And I know, shouts to a friend of the show, uh, Joseph Alafachi. Saw him and he tried out the new Bellagio uh, Verlaggio, rather, Verlaggio restaurant, the new Italian place. And he said he's been Italian himself. Joe, Joey gave it the tick of approval. So that's pretty good as well. So, yeah, get along to West Ashfield and uh, we'll have our $50 voucher comment of the week coming up later in the show. And also, shout out to our friends at Mobile Corp. Um, let's see if I can get the word correct this week. So, uh, Mobile Corp, they support local businesses by managing managing their IT, their networks, and their mobile devices. If you're a local business owner looking for a partner who will take away the hassle of dealing with IT issues, make sure you have cybersecurity in place. Handle all your mobile device needs, then Mobile Corp can help. Mobile Corp is a family-run business and longtime supporter of the West Tigers. Reach out to Stephen and the team at Mobile Corp. Check out mobilecorp.com.au. That's mobilecorp.com.au. Or you can go to uh, our link tree. has a link to the guys as well. So westtigers.com.au. You can't find. If you can't spell Mobile Corp uh, and find it. Right, on to some news so the only news story really that dropped between the, the last time we went to air it's more Lachlan Galvin talk so Shane Richardson came out and admitted that his management that uh, had asked for a release so Richard Richardson said I met with Isaac and his dad because we had no intention of Lockie going anywhere what the family really wanted to know is where he belonged with us they were thinking you bought all these people all these play- playmakers so where does my kid stand and to be honest I can understand that I'm a father too but I knew how good he was I knew we needed to build this club around him he's got a good family they just needed some re- reassurances that we were going to take care of him and that he would not get 
I've cut off the last word there. I didn't think there would be an issue because I knew how Benji was thinking and how impressed he was at training. I didn't think, didn't know he was going to pick him there in the first game. There was never any doubt in my mind before a ball was kicked or Benji's that he was going to be starting a starting six for this club. We gave him those reassurances and we've kept our word. Rob, we've talked about this in the Discord a bit that, um, yeah, Lockie Galvin, the management talking the hard yards. We've got him locked up for a couple of years, but here we are already talking about whether or not we can keep him. So what are your thoughts on this whole situation? Well, firstly, with that article, Josh, um, Richo has said clearly that, um, you know, he'll he'll pay him what he thinks he's worth. Um, they're definitely trying to upgrade him and, and extend his contract. Uh, look, if I'm being perfectly objective, I mean, we've got him for another couple of years. I, I look at it this way, and it's it's, it's not favourable for the West Tigers, but just hear me out here. If I'm Lockie Galvin, if I wait to the end of 26, I'm going to be the hottest player on the market, and salary caps are going to be a bit bigger by then as well. I'm going to demand well over seven digits if, if I hold mm. off, if, if I see this out. So what that what I'm alluding to is I really think the West Tigers need to show some serious faith in that we are building the club around you. We, we want you at our club for life. Uh, you know, he's on a contract this year of 150, I think next year 250 and 350 the following year. We might have to bump that up like super duper significantly because we can see what a difference our team looked like without him there. I think mm. I, it was only three games that he's played, but f- when you go off those first three games, guys, I don't think you could have got a better sample base. He's not the sort of guy that he's the fastest or he's just the best. Like he just, it's like he's a, <laughs> a mature footy player and he and he's just been do it, doing it all his life and he makes our other players look great. You know, from and from a Tigers point of view too, this is the one thing I would say to Lockie Galvin, and I know he loves Benji and he loves the club and he's, not really keen to go anywhere. If you think that, say, Appy will retire in a couple of years, if I look at sort of the core group of the West Tigers, who they may or might not be, and I see Jareen Buller at fullback, I know Luai is going to be there, but you've got halves that, are, you know, he'd have either himself there or or Latu Fainu. You've got Steph, you've got Talon De Silva, you've got Samuel Fainu. Like, there's six or seven guys that are, that are good bloody players. Like, they're stars. So there's just so much to like about where we're going as a club. And I, I think we're going up. And I think Benji, I, I, I'm not saying like I'm not saying Benji's bought the best out of Lockie Galvin, but Benji's certainly given him the opportunity. He's certainly, certainly letting Lockie Galvin play the style that he likes. He just looks like he's loving what he's doing out there. Demands the football when he wants it. Does what he sees. You know, plays that term that everyone hates saying, eyes up footy. Uh, but I just think he's having fun, and he's and he's going to get better. And and it's not like we we're playing like crap, and he and you know he needs to go play for for the Storm or the Roosters or whatever. But I, I certainly don't want him getting offended. And you know, hypothetically, our management, you know, offer him, oh hey mate, we'll give you three hundred for this year and four hundred for next year and five hundred for next year. When the guy's showing that right now he's worth three quarters of a million dollars, like minimum. Mm. So it's just it's just a real tough one. But look. I keep saying it to you guys. I, I trust Richo. Richo's Richo's no fool. He doesn't need advice from you, Aaron, or me. Um, mm. But at the same time, I know every club out there will want him. And if he feels like he's getting taken advantage of, and that leaves a you know sort of bitter taste with his dad or with his his manager, who's who can be a little bit you know what prickly. Um, mm-hmm. We we don't need to leave any chance of that. We we really do need to to lock him up and. You know, I, I think he's going to be more valuable to our club than Jerome Luai. So you, you've mm. got to be talking. You've got to be talking some seriously big numbers there. Yeah. As on that, with Jerome Luai, do you think? Look, we've got a uh, a decent amount of halves in the club. Obviously, going forward, once Luai gets here, how do you think that's all going to work out? It's really, <clears throat> apologies. Um, it's really hard to see how all of the halves we have signed currently fit into the team. I'm at the moment believing that uh, Galvin will partner Luai next year, which I think is going to be a really strong combination. Um, Sullivan probably seems to be the odd one out at the moment. 
And I think Latu needs a little bit more time to develop and was kind of thrown into it this weekend because there was, or this last weekend gone because there was very little choice. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the situation there. Obviously, Caesar is on a one year deal with a second year option. Um, so that may be taken, it may not be. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, I, I think that's sort of how the puzzle's going to come together next year. Yeah, I, I think Caesar, I think it's a mutual option with Caesar. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So there, I mean, the way he's playing, yeah, we might want to keep him there, but yeah, we'll see. I think, Look, next Josh, year. I, think, I think what's ruined this whole puzzle and how they're all going to fit is I don't care how what Galvin did in lower grades or you know in his juniors or whatever. I don't think anyone expected Lockie Galvin to be this good. That's what's mm. thrown everything off because you look at it from the Tigers' point of view. We we got Luai after we got all these other guys. We didn't know that Luai would ever come to our club, so that, that kind of worked out back to front. We never thought Latu's going to be like you know reasonably ready to play first grade. We certainly didn't think Galvin was ready, and the plan was to run Caesar and Sullivan. And just let mm. these other guys develop slowly. But, you know, Galvin's just like this jewel that's come out of nowhere. Like he's this gift sent from God that we just can't <laughs> let go, man. Like, yeah. dear God, I just want him to, you know, if there's one thing, if I have one wish, footy wish, I just want Galvin to be a Tiger for life. That's literally, I don't care if they move a dozen players. If, if this yep. guy is in our team, we are always going to be competitive because he's a winner. And I know it's a big call on three games, but he, he's just a player, man. He's just such mm. a good player. So we, we need to we need to keep that Galvanator cooking man and just and 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 make him happy. And he looks happy. He looks happy. He looks like he's enjoying his footy. Uh I think we beat the Dolphins if he plays the other night. That's that's how good he was. Mm. I'm not saying Sullivan was bad. Sullivan had some bright moments. I loved what I saw from Latu Fainu, even though he didn't do that much. He just didn't overplay his hand. But you can see Latu Fainu's got poise and class and and more importantly he can really tackle i think he only missed one tackle and he and he, he's tackling with four so we've, we've got so much potential and just remember what shane richardson said guys because i keep going back to this he kind of dodged around the, the question of what are we going to do with our halves and he basically didn't give us an answer but he said well i'd rather have the problem of what we're going to do with the halves and other than other clubs who are trying to find a half so mm. i think that was his admission that we've got to work something out and we've got to do it pretty quickly but uh, as he said, it's better to have that problem than, than not to have enough halves because we haven't had enough. We haven't had halves for ten years, really. I mean, yeah. Moses left obviously, and and Brooksy was never a number seven. He was he was a number six, and we kept trying to make him a number seven. So look, it, it'll all work out in the end, guys. I'm sure Benji and Richo will, will sort it out. And yeah, but, but I agree with Aaron. I think ultimately Sullivan will be the odd one out. I just hope Sullivan plays well enough that someone will pay most of his contract and say Sullivan will be an asset to us. Uh, right, I'm moving on to Saturday night's game where the West Tigers going down 26-16 to the Dolphins at Suncorp Stadium. Let's go try by try. Here's the first one to uh, Isaiah Katoa. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You, you tell me. Getting up there, he looked oh, uh, a little ginger. Great play, Dolphins. Bus stops up the move. Katoa's inside. Katoa's on his way. The Dolphins have got the first try. They've opened up the Tigers. As the boys came out, looking much softer than in previous weeks. Yeah, I'm not really sure how much of the um, slow start had to do with the five-day turnaround and the travel up to Suncorp. It, it obviously is a bit of a short week when you've got to go to a different state on just the five-day turnaround and play what was going to end up being a hmm. very tough, brutal game after what was a very tough, brutal game in, like, basically 30-degree heat where you did a mountain of defence. But, uh, yeah, defence was a little bit soft and a little bit poor to start the game. Um, I will get to it a, a bit more later, but I'd say their entire spine played well, the Dolphins. Um, Isaiah hmm. Katoa was probably the best out of all of them, but that was just a very simple movement down the left-hand side, which, because uh, we had, we had, our um, defenders were a little bit too far in and they found it a little bit too easy to get down there and Isaiah followed on the inside and was able to run away for a simple try. So that was the fourth minute 
And then in the 25th minute, the Dolphins cracked again. Marshall King on for Kafusi. Run up over the advantage line. Felice has wound back the clock, sprinting, lifting up with no better man. Ever so Tabuai Fido. Rob, before that, tried the Tigers. We had a few chances before that to level things up, but it just didn't happen. Yeah, definitely we did. Um, guys, I'm going to disagree with both of you. Ha- having rewatched the game, look, look, pre-game, I thought we had no right to win it on a five-day backup. In hindsight, we should have won the game. Uh, I disagree with you that our defence was soft. That second try is certainly soft, and it's the only time that a forward has run right through the middle of us and gone through. But we went set for set with the Dolphins. It was one poor appy kick along the ground that gave the Dolphins a bit of field position, and they got outside us. Uh, this one was just super poor, like uh, poor Fanua Pole. Maybe that was from fatigue. He was sort of having a little bit of a bludge in the in the background. And if he's up in the line with everyone else, there's no hole there for Kafusi to go through. There was just no right for Kafusi to go through through that hole whatsoever. So uh, just mm. that was a really probably the only bit of poor defence all year. But but again, I I think our boys showed up. I think they they played hard. I think they defended well. Our goal line defence was outstanding. Uh, I'm not going to. I mean, certainly, guys. Some guys missed tackles, but when they made breaks, they got around us. Like the first try was just good play by them, and they showed up our right edge again. Uh, you know, the we we'll get onto the try in the second half with the kick that got be put behind uh, Latu Fainu. Like I think we defended well, guys. And but I, I don't think the Dolphins are all that. I I I really love what I'm seeing from our team. My my only concern with our team now is being healthy and getting close to our best seventeen on the team, but. Right now, if we get our best 17 on the game, we, we're going to hurt some other teams. We really are. Yeah, it's a shame that this weekend against the Dragons, definitely full full strength. We're already favourite. With the bookies being at home, I guess, and the Dragons struggled last week. But, yeah, definitely need to uh, get some of our guys back. Uh, but in this, so at halftime, there was a penalty goal uh, in between... There, no, two penalty goals, wasn't it? Because they missed a com- conversion. So, yeah, as the penalties, yeah, talking, we'll talk refereeing in the first half to start with. Um, how did you see it in the first half? Obviously, the second half, we'll get to the that call, but um, yeah, a couple of penalty goals for the Dolphins to go into halftime at 14 0. Yeah, I didn't think the refereeing in the first half was all that bad. Uh, we got quite a few calls um, early stages of the game, and I was really thinking to myself in those early stages, we're going to have to be careful here. We don't normally get this many penalties or set restarts, so it's going to even out a little bit later on and how right I ended up being. But uh, yeah, our discipline at times in the first half wasn't the greatest, holding on a little bit too long in tackles, um, laying over in the ruck and just... Silly offsides like we did a couple of times against Para last week. Uh, mm. Yeah, we just kept shooting ourselves in the foot and um, they were deserving 14 nil leaders at halftime, I, th- I thought. Uh, coming out of the second half, three minutes in to the second half. We, ha- oh, Sorry, two minutes in the second half. This happened. Back it goes. Caesar gets it to the end. All right, that's the next one. This one. Uh, for Twal and Caesar along for Papaliti. Cut it ball. Stays now. Straightens up. Fatape looking for a try. He's got his first. This will show it perfectly. And the try confirmed. Yeah, gets it down at first attempt yeah, there. Beautiful. And the ball rolls down the body, but the work. Uh, the boys, yeah, back in the game with this one. Nice little bit of work from. Uh, Charlie Staines on this one, as yeah, I, I thought that um, the that side of the field did pretty well on that little play there, and um, Fatape had a lot of work to do to score both of his tries in the end, really, and um, yeah, he was he was determined that that's for sure to put that one down, and then just uh, how long? Uh, no, sorry the. The Dolphins scored after this, wasn't it? Yeah, seven minutes later. So this is 
not long after this, we had the no 54th minute. Sorry, reading, trying to read across the things. Sorry, we'll go back to play what I played before because it was 12 minutes later that uh, this happened and I literally just had it. Back it goes, Caesar gets it to the goal! Double, is it? Solomon Fatape plunges under the ball. Again, he just threads it through beautifully off the left boot. Sits up perfectly. Just dabs it through the inside of Katoa there. And Fatape, does he get his second? He didn't look confident with the put down. Yeah, they, the commentators try to take that one away from us. But Rob, tries off grubber kicks. It's something that we're not really used to as much in recent years. And Lockie Galvin showed he was good at it last week. And Aiden Caesar, uh, we're talking about golden boots earlier, obviously. He's, Aiden Caesar's boot is definitely uh, definitely up there, possibly a silver, a silver boot. He was booting them beautifully. Yeah, Caesar's kicking game was outstanding. Uh, that's the second week in a row, as you said, that we've got a try off that. We normally get tries scored against us with that move, but it's good to see, mm. especially when you've got a hard-running player like Olam, for example, last week running and you, you, you're freezing, so you're planting your feet, getting ready to tackle him, and that kick comes out of surprise. And the same goes for that one. I think Papa Lee was was running pretty hard uh, as well inside uh, Fata Ape, so it was a, a good try. And I just, I just want to send a message, Josh, to my dear friend, uh, what probably having a sip of wine out in Blackhead, who's questioning why I said, am, am I crazy to say that Galvin's worth 750 Mate, listen to me. Hear me out. If Bud Sullivan's worth 500 Lockie <laughs> Galvin's worth $1.5 million, okay? Go finish your red wine. Stop texting me during my podcast. I love you dearly. <laughs> Go enjoy your time with the family, okay? And just remember that you're wrong sometimes. If this kid was on the open market, mate, he'd get three quarters of a million dollars tomorrow. So just go back 100%. to sleep, leave me alone, and let me do my podcast. Thank you. <laughs> uh, right, I lost my train of thought there. Um, not long after this. <laughs> not, so after this, so the scores were literally within uh, a try of the Dolphins as the penalty, obviously, yeah, can't over overlook that the or the lack of a penalty. Sorry, there should have been a a, uh, a six again. Happy Corusau, pretty standard quarter marker offside. Referee reckons twelve was going back through the ruck or some bullshit excuse. Um, I think every West Tigers fan watching this was uh, yeah ready to. I don't know. Might might have been a few smash TVs or. Some, um, yeah, some walls with holes in it. Because I was definitely, definitely watching this one. I was back home, half time, went home to watch the rest of the game on the TV to put the uh, young bloke to bed. And man, I was booming at this lack of decision from the referee. Yeah, that was bad. Um, in my opinion, the defender, no matter what. Twal was doing, the defender still has a responsibility to get square at the play the ball. And I think it was, was it Nicarima? He didn't even attempt to get square. So considering the position on the field, it should have been a six again. And then as soon as the ball was raked out, it should have been reversed and been a penalty because he was an, he was a player in an offside position. Appy did absolutely beautifully by running straight at him, knowing that he, he was not square and therefore not on side and then had to go back 10 before he could contact the, the play the play the ball now the person who was playing the ball um yeah the fact that none of that went our way when we had the momentum at that point we were marching downfield fairly easily the score had gotten back to um uh, 16 no 14 14 10 um and we looked to be well and truly on top of the game at that point but yeah the fact that um we didn't get that call that we thoroughly deserved. Uh, and then they went downfield and scored a try not long later, just took all the wind right back out of our sails and made it mm. a very big mountain to climb from there. Rob, look, we can't guarantee that we would have won, but that decision right there could well have changed the game. 
it's it's a turning point of the game. I mean, it, you know, everyone says we lost it in the first half. What's the point of fighting back, clawing your way back into the game and getting a dud decision like that? And honestly, that was like a box trifecta of bad decisions. We should have got mm. either a penalty, a six again, and even the strip went towards our own try line. Like it was a knock-on strip. Just everything. Mm. There is no way we shouldn't have had the ball there. It completely killed our momentum. Uh, but that was that was standard all game. Like you know, Fata Ape got tackled on half time without the ball, no call. Uh, Papali'i in the second half barges over from dummy half. They go to the they go to the replay to see if it's grounded. The hammers got two feet in front of the try line, and like, what are they checking? Like it's an offside penalty, and we didn't score, and it, and it took us another five minutes to score. So. We just never got the rub from from the referee, and uh, but that seems pretty common up in Queensland. We don't we don't seem to get a fair go there. But uh, mm. I, I just think, what's the point of fighting back if you're going to get rorted? And and I, I I think the boys deserve better. I, I at fourteen nil at halftime, I thought we got no hope. We're going to get, you know, I, I know the boys are trying, but they're backing up in five days. It's going to be a thirty point blowout, and you know, fifteen minutes later, I'm like, we can win this. I can't believe mm. I can't believe where are they finding this resilience from, you know, they lost Fain, you know, we lost uh, Samuel Fainu in the second minute of the second half and up against it, Appy was struggling. I thought Appy's passing game in, in the first half was very un like like some passes mm. were hitting other players' fingers or, or you know, not putting them on the chest like the one to Caesar that he knocked on. I, I thought Appy was a bit off. You can tell he wasn't 100%. It wasn't mm. a normal Appy first half. So just a lot of things went against us and we were still in the game, but yeah, that 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 when that penalty happened, like we we lost it here, you know, watching with my family in the lounge room, and and it turned out to be the deciding moment of the game. We never really recovered from that. Yep, and of course the ti- uh, the Titans, the Dolphins went the other way, and this happened. Long to Katoa, kick before the last. Vicar oh. Raymond's there, seven to six. Has Ben Boozled the Tigers too good. Absolutely too good. Right on its point for Nick Yeah, I definitely said some swear words after that try happened. Aaron, it's, yeah, it's just completely, yeah, it's always a way, isn't it? It's just bad decision goes against us and the other team go the other way and score a try and basically, yeah, I mean, two tries with 20 minutes ago isn't, Normally, game over, especially in the modern rugby league. I mean, five minutes ago, it's not not over. But, but I mean, with all the factors we've already talked about, and the boys trying to come back, and exhaustion, and injuries, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think as soon as Nikarima scored that, uh, our hope was dashed pretty much. Yeah, that was the point where I started to get a little bit disheartened as well because we had done so well to fight back into it. We concede that BS call and then, yeah, like you said, normally the swings and roundabouts of rugby league take, um, take, give us a, make us take a hit pretty quickly. And it did it again on this occasion. Um, it was a brilliant try. Don't get me wrong. It was a very, very good kick from, um, Isaiah Katoa for Nikarima to ground in, in the end goal. But, uh, yeah, they never shouldn't have, should have gotten to that point. Not at that point of the game. Anyway, we should have been marching down the other end, but, um, just to those people who are saying we we um like we shouldn't have wasted our challenge. I saw a few people in the comments who were saying that. Yes, that's true. We shouldn't have wasted our challenge at the first half. That was absolute that was an absolutely moronic call. But unfortunately, we wouldn't have been able to challenge that call anyway because there was no stoppage in play because they got the ball and they kept going. So that was um so there we wouldn't have been able to challenge it regardless, which is disappointing because yeah, there has to be a stoppage in play. I mean, we can lay on them in a tackle to initiate a penalty. Um, but in doing that, if you do that just to, just to do a captain's challenge, if it does happen to mm. go, go against you, it's considered a professional foul on a sin bin. So it's a very high risk, mm. high reward strategy there. So yes, we did waste our challenge, but in this case, it wouldn't have helped us. Uh Four minutes later, the nail in the coffin. Oh, long range try is probably uh, on the list here. Oh, that sees is going to go 40 20. Now he's got the distance. Has he got the angle? Aiden yes. Caesar! It is a perler. He's second of the night. He kicks it on the third. Enjoy Commando. Quick play the ball. Coruscant. Safe up. Safe up. Throws over. 
Tigers have another one. Avuto and Kimanu, they just weren't able to get back and some little bit of deception from Horacio and Farnworth. I, th I Rob, think you might have missed their last try in there, Josh. The, you were, you were uh, saying nail in the coffin, and then you went to... Yeah, uh, got away from yeah. yeah <laughs> this one. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's been a long day. It's been a shit, it's a shit, yeah, it's a shit performance by me, not going to lie. Uh, the, they're all jumbled up. I have numbered them, so no, no excuses. Absolute idiot. I literally numbered them one to seven, and I literally skipped a number. But you're right, Az. Here we go. Hey, Kenny Bromwich with the ball. Doesn't get many tries. He's got a big one here. Kenny Bromwich. You can just see here, just look at his effort off the footy as Marshall King probes and slices his way through. The veteran just pushing in support. Uh, Michael Lannis just makes everything worse. Uh, <laughs> Rob, thoughts on this one? Yeah, look, that was just like really poor market defence from Fata Arpe. He was out of position and then Ice Papali, he was caught flat-footed and Kenny Bromwich was through and, you know, there was no chance for Buller to stop a two-on-one there. So, uh, yeah, it was just, yeah, poor play. But, look, I mean, I think all our mistakes basically came from fatigue. It wasn't, you know, maybe if Fata Arpe had come back to market, I think it's a different story there. But, yeah, look, we just got caught out. Uh, pants pulled down and, and they took advantage of it. But I, I think overall they weren't that much better than us. It just might have felt mm. that way because we were chasing the scoreboard all night. But um, I, I'm proud of the effort, guys. I, I, I thought we defended well. There was just there was just like real bad lapses like that one, like the right edge for the first try, you know, like uh, Felice Cafusi, you know, just get, getting a, an open run up the middle of our ruck with, you know, Polo having a cigarette out the back of the ruck there, mm. like, it just they're, they're things that haven't been in our in our defense this year and it just happened and maybe that's down to fatigue but i think 26 16 was very respectable it, I, I know we don't really care too much right now about for and against but it might come in handy later in the year because that game mm -hmm. could have been 36 to nil so uh I, i'm proud of the way the boys boys fought but yeah we definitely need to be better as i've already played it obviously out of order big red making a habit of scoring tries it seems yeah, it's his second try of the year, and uh, good on him. Uh, I think he would have really enjoyed that one, considering he was in a little bit of a battle, um, a little bit of a verbal stoush, if you will, with some of the Dolphins players throughout most of the game. Uh, he was a little bit lucky to not cop a penalty and a potential suspension for a um, a missed headbutt, where if it hit its mark, he would have been in a bit of trouble. But uh, yeah, he enjoyed that one, I can't and I can't blame him. Um, and I'll add one thing about Vossi as well. Sometimes I reckon he, he's going to blow a gasket, um, particularly <laughs> when a big forward scores a try. He seems to enjoy that a great deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame we couldn't get a win and have the Vossi drops on this one. But yeah, bears it may. I think, yeah, next week, eight day turnaround, we will be missing a few players. But I think the key guys like Appy getting eight days in between, I, I think we can bounce back against the Dragons, but we'll preview that tomorrow night right on to your ratings for the week and the three two one so stefano out the front he got 96.8 percent of votes from you and second place jareem buller he got 90.3 and aiden caesar 88.7 uh not far behind there solomon fatape 83.9 uh, Api Korosau, 79, and Justin Olam, 75%. So they're the, the big ones in there. Alex Safar, 72 as well. The others, yeah, much lower down. Any of those numbers stand out for you, As? No, I think everything's probably all where I would have expected it to be. Um, a few of the players down the lower end who I may have given a few more votes to. Obviously, there were some players who didn't play a lot of minutes for one reason or another, like uh, Johnny Bateman, for example, um, played the first half and all of, I think, maybe... Actually, no, he, he went... Did he go off in the first half? No, yeah, he went off in the first half with a few minutes to go. So he didn't even get through the entire first half. Um, obviously, Appy was a little bit here and there throughout the game. Great second half, uh, problematic first half. And, um, yeah, Latu didn't really get to show us much on debut and... But yeah, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with Stefano. 
um, up there as one of the the most highly voted players. Same with a- Aiden Caesar, like his 40 20s. Um, mm. We don't get to see a lot of those as Tigers fans. So when we got two in one game, it was great. It yep. was unfortunately we. It was very unfortunate we couldn't capitalize on the first one because we we made a knock on in that set. But um, yeah, very good performance by him. Uh, Rob, you mentioned you said, thought Jaden Sullivan was a bit better than people thought. He only got twenty two point six percent. Look, it's a it's a mixed bag. So in the first half, I mean, look, the one thing he does overdo a little bit is that show and go. Like no one's going to fall for that dummy if you keep throwing the dummy. But he certainly created an overlap. Having rewatched the first half again. He created an overlap out wide in their red zone and and, and basically got uh, Fata Arpe into a bit of a two-on-one. Uh, I thought when he got the first receiver a few times, he actually straightened the attack up just a little bit, just held the defence up a little bit. Uh, 30, thought his first couple of kicks were really good. Uh, he still looks, you know, a little bit how you're going in defence, but he was definitely more enthusiastic and... As I said to you guys privately, like he couldn't have got worse than the Canberra game anyway. So what I found surprising, though, you know, you, I, I know Latu is the same position, but if you got a guy on half a million dollars for four years and he's your starting number six and then Latu comes on and you shift Sullivan to hooker, I kind of feel like that's almost a demotion or you're not happy with what he was providing at 5'8". Because uh, I'm sure Latu could have... He certainly he defends well and he can pick a ball up and pass from dummy half. So... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do with Sullivan, but I, I, I didn't think he was as bad as what I thought watching the game live. Uh, mm. And I just hope he really has a big game this week because we're going to need him to step up this week. We're, we, we're going to be missing Galvin again and we're going to be potentially missing some others. Definitely both Fainus are out. Uh, I, I need to know what's going on with Johnny Bateman. I, I, I literally feel mm. like if John Bateman doesn't get named, we're in massive trouble. Uh, but I don't know what's going on with our boys with Safarth, Bateman... Samuel Afainu, like they all had the angry pills before the game the other night. Like they just wanted to fight and, you know, fight with everyone they came in contact with. Even uh, Samuela, when he came off uh, with his concussion, he wanted to fight with someone in the crowd. Like, crowd, yeah. <laughs> the boys were on angry pills. And, and Johnny Bateman's just a better player when he just stays out of that crap. He's, he's too good a footballer to get involved with that hot headed stuff. You know, we need him mm. just being, being the best version of John Bateman like he was the week before. Uh, Fanua Pole, I just noticed fifty eight percent. I think obviously you mentioned letting that try in before, but I think he was a bit better, even statistically as, which we'll get to. Fifty eight percent might be a little bit low for Pole. This might surprise you, Josh, but um, when I did this survey, I didn't tick Fanua Pole as one of the players okay. I thought played well. I I didn't think he had a particularly good game. Like, yeah, stats showed that maybe he did, but. It's sometimes those defensive issues that stand out a little bit more, I suppose. Um, and he wasn't, I don't think he was running as hard as normal, like no off the back fence runs, which was a little bit disappointing. I just, I'm not sure he was completely into this game. Maybe he was struggling potent, potentially a little bit more than some of the other players with the short turnaround and obviously the heavy minutes he had to play um, last Monday. So maybe that's a little bit of a, a reason why. So yeah, he was one of the few players I, I, didn't tick as played well. I think I think he was tired, guys. Like you can see, like in the first half, we're talking about some of Appy's passes that weren't great. You know, one of those passes I think comes off Bolo's hand when he's running a decoy. Uh, we saw him try and and trap a goal line dropout, a long goal line dropout that he should have just swallowed, you know, down his chest and, and run the ball back. And he tried to trap it with his foot and it went back towards the opposition. That's just a sign of fatigue to me. I, I don't see any 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 time there that he's ever going to use his foot, yet he did. So I, I just think it wasn't his best game, but I, I, I'm not blame, I'm not saying he wasn't trying. I just think he was absolutely exhausted. Isaiah Papa Lee, you got 18 not well votes. So people thinking Papa not playing well. I saw someone on Twitter the other, other day comparing him to Adam Blair, and I thought that was absolutely insane. I think he's been much better for us this year and this one. Not so much as. Yeah, I think that's pretty harsh. I thought Bateman played well. I feel like maybe sometimes some of our fans... Um, not but, but, sorry, Papa. Papa, oh, Papa Lee. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I got a bit distracted there. Um, Papa, yeah, I thought Papa had a good game as well. Um, it's really tricky with Papa because I don't think we're giving him ball in the in the right spaces. Um you really need to give him a really strong run on the ball for him to actually be able to 
do something with it or or make a big hard uh, crash tackling run. And yeah, I'll, and I think this was the problem a lot of last year as well. He just wasn't getting the ball um, in the right places, and it made it really hard for to get the best out of him. I, th- I think though that his votes are down just from that one play where um, Jeremy Marshall King just uh, went straight through from dummy half. Other than that, I, I nearly gave him one point in my three two ones. I, I thought he was great. I thought his his beautiful face ball to Charlie Staines before he put Fata Ape away for the try was really good. Uh, nearly barged over from dummy half in the first half. They had him defending in the middle a lot, so he's doing a lot of work there. I thought he did a lot of work. Obviously, he got caught out with that one dummy half run, and maybe that's what people remember. They only did remember the one bad thing and not not all mm. the good things he did. But I, I thought he was definitely one of our best players. Uh, Stefano Utoikamano, who got 42.6% of your man of the match uh, votes in this one. I mean, we're running out of good things to say about Stefano, but he, uh, again, he was he, he was freaking awesome in this one. How many minutes did he play in this one as? Like 60 eight or something he ended up playing yeah somewhere something. In, somewhere in the 60s um uh, I don't know, i'm able to uh yeah about 65 66 minutes yeah absolutely like crazy so he got your three points as and got the vote as well so as you want to run us through your three two one yep so my three i gave to stefano i thought it was an absolutely sensational game from him he's really stood up and been a leader in the forward pack uh, so far this year and obviously he had a bit of a tough game in round two but pretty much all of our team did um but yeah he was sensational i truly think he's a future captain of the club if he decides to stick around i gave buller the two because i thought he was really bloody brilliant as well um he was always there sniffing around in attack which is what we saw from him a lot last year a lot of his support plays were really good a um, little bit of rust here and there, but I think you're going to get that with a player in their second year, particularly in the early season. Um, but still, yeah, absolutely fantastic game. And this one might surprise a few people, but I gave Charlie Staines my one. This is probably a little bit more because I was impressed with the improvement from his first few games to this one. Um, obviously, he had a really tough defensive assignment on Mike Acevo on Easter Monday, and mm. he handled that really well. Um, and I thought for the most part, he handled his defensive assignment this week really well as well. Um, Bostock down that side is quite dangerous. And for the most part, except for the first try we let through, he did a really good job. Mm. Uh, he also made a lot of really strong, important runs in this game. Uh, and he was there as well, like trying to help the team out of the danger end. And yeah, I thought he had a really solid game. So I gave him my one. Rob, who are your three to one? Yeah, you'll probably have to read out my one, Josh, on the phone here, but I know I gave Aiden Caesar three and Steph two. I could have gone the other way, but I was just really impressed with um, Caesar's kicking game. I I thought he was brilliant, uh, especially not having Galvin next to him. Uh, Steph just continues to amaze. He's he's had um, an unbelievable start to the year. I think he's heading for origin at this rate. At at a minimum, the bench spot, he'd create some great impact for Madge off the bench in origin. I think I went Buller one. Is that who I can yep. see there? Yeah. Uh, Buller, Buller looked Buller, – Buller was really good, but still, like, I kind of wish he had a look up early to find Olam. You know, we would have had that bounce back try. Um, you know, some people are, are whinging that he should have been, you know, running harder and getting back into position for the kick that was uh, put through uh, by Kato, which I think is just being really harsh. He was only, you know, a metre left of the ruck where the ball was played. Uh, but yeah, Bull, Bull has just been you know pretty solid all year to be fair. So uh, another good performance from him. But yeah, look, loving what Steph's doing, guys. He's he's really leading our pack well, and and you, you feel confident when Steph's in the team. So according to your votes, uh, Steph has got the three, Buller two, and Caesar one. So that leaves Steph just half a point after he got half the point last week, half a point behind Appy Corosau who's on 17, Steph's on 16.5, Lockie Galvin stuck on 13, and uh, Aiden Caesar is on 9, and Dream Buller on 9.5, Olam on 7, and then Charlie picked up a point from Az to go with probably his point from last week. So, yeah, pretty... Close at the top, I wouldn't write Lockie Gal. Is he going to miss one more game? I mean, you probably think Steph and Appy will pick up some points, but 
Um, yeah, we'll see how we go the rest of the year. Right, stats man, what have you got for us this week? Uh, so two things. First, uh, I've got one on Keith Barnes. So personally, I didn't really have much to do with Keith or I didn't know much about him because I'm obviously a little bit later than that time and I didn't start following the game until uh, the at least the early 2010. So I didn't know too much about him, but I heard from Josh that his nickname was Golden Boots and I wanted to try and find out why. I have had a feeling it was probably something to do with his goal kicking and as you all know, um, I'm, I'd be right on that. I couldn't find mm. an exact like percentage or ratio of uh, kick uh, conversions or goal kicks made versus total, um, total taken. Yep. But what I did find was there was one game, and I'm just going to pull it up on my phone really quick. Um, sorry, guys. I'm just trying to remember Commit. where it is. Who I, took, I took a... North Sydney, yeah. So it was a 24th of July, 1960. The team played, Balmain played North Sydney, won 46 to 22. There were eight tries scored and Keith Barnes kicked 11 goals. So I imagine wow. there was a lot of, um, a lot of tries that were converted that night or that day, plus a few penalty goals as well. So he must have had a really good day with the boot there. And um, I found one more thing. Apparently, he had one attempt at a field goal and unfortunately didn't make it in his final season. So <laughs> I wonder if that was something that was up his arsenal that uh, he just never really got around to testing or if it was like a experimental thing in his final season. But uh, I guess I'll never know on that one. And I think field goals were worth more back then, weren't they, Rob? Yeah, they were worth two points back then. And obviously, yeah. tries were worth three points back then. So eight, eight tries to 24 and, and the 11 goals. 22, mm, like wow. Eric Eric Sims from South Sydney kicked seven field goals or something in a game. He was he was prodigious at kicking field goals. Yeah, so yeah. They, were, they were different era there, guys. There was a lot of uh, unlimited play the ball before then. The four tackle rule came in, and then the six tackle came, rule came in later on. So the games changed quite a bit. Mm. As and I just and I just had one more stat on the game, or technically one of our players. Alex Safer, this is his first season where he's kicked, uh, where he's scored more than one try in a season. Um, he's played, this is his fifth season with us, I believe. He scored one try in his second and one try in his fourth. Um, and now he's already scored two tries in four games this year. So it's his first multiple try season. So congrats, congratulations, Big Red. Do you think Twally will ever get one of those? I'm hoping so. I mean, I did put in my preseason predictions this year that I think Twally's going to at least triple his tally um, of tries this year. So I'm hoping that he gets multiple tries and makes me look like an absolute friggin' genius. That'd be great. Plenty of time. Did, Plenty of time. Did you see the sidestep? <laughs> he, uh, did you see the sidestep he did, Aaron? Went like about ten meters out from the line, and and Vossi was going to explode. He thought something big was about to happen. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was great. I always like listening to. Um, Vossi when we've got players like Twal and Safar score, uh, not necessarily scoring, but doing well or looking like they're about to score. Because like I said before, it looks like he's going to blow a gasket. And <laughs> he's one of the great commentators to watch when it comes to, I think, just the genuine excitement he has for some of the players. And obviously I said this last year, but um, Vossi was the perfect commentator to be at Campbelltown to call Alex Twal's first try, mm. considering the absolute crusade he went on um particularly in that preseason with his segment on the fan uh where he asked forwards other try scoring forwards for advice for alex on how he could score his um how he could score his first try and for yeah for it to work out so well that vossi was there the night it happened i thought that was just a beautiful rugby league moment yeah maybe this weekend back at Campbelltown this week uh st stats from this game, 52% of the possession for our boys, 80% uh, completion, 32 of 40. Yeah, probably need to get that up a bit more. 33 out of 37 for the Dolphins. They were very clinical, um, very much a Wayne Bennett coach side in this one. Um, everything else is pretty even. Run meters is only 50 meters apart. Um, Post-contact meters, look, we've got an extra 140 on them, their line breaks, only three for our side compared to five. Tackle breaks, 27 to 26. 
Uh, yeah, everything else, it's it's all very even, unfortunately. I mean, 4020s, we got two on them. Offloads, we got two more, 11 to 9. Yeah, statistically, looking at this, it's hard to believe that we'll 14 points behind, Rob, because, yeah, I mean, errors, that's the big one, isn't it? 11 to 5, I guess that's the, the big difference. Yeah, I, I mean, if we could have one thing back, I just wish we could have done a bit more in the red zone uh, in the first half. I, I, re- I really thought we, we defended on our goal line really well all game. It was just those long-range tries and obviously a kick behind. Uh, so, look, goal line defence has improved, which is a massive tick. Uh, but, yeah, we, we just looked a bit clunky in attack. And I know I've said, you know, Abby wasn't passing, you know, very crisply in the red zone, et cetera, et cetera. But full marks him for coming back on in the second half. Uh, sitting with my family, we kind of thought if the Dolphins get to 20 nil, then Appy might not come back on for the game. And the fact that he came back on at 14 6, I thought, showed a lot of courage. And then when he did come back on, he actually played it, played out of his skin. Uh, so that's the sort of captain that we want to have, and that's the captain we love. Top meter readers for our boys, Jareem Buller was uh, number one, 177, Fanula Pole 171, and Steph 162. Uh, post contact meters was also pole, so he had 70 post contact meters. Uh, line breaks just one each for Charlie Stane, Steph, and Big Red. Hit ups 15 each for Steph and Papa, and tackle breaks Stefano six. I, I had to copy and paste Stefano's picture many times in this. To let it tie first in offloads, two with Justin Olam, and led the team in tackling 41 to one, which is one missed. As he was, we've already talked about Steph, but it's worth worth mentioning again because literally I've got his photo six thousand times on these slides because he's just he was just so freaking good. Yeah, I think you can see why I gave him my three this week. I just thought he was absolutely brilliant. And the thing about the forwards is they have to do so much more of the work in less time um, because obviously they interchange with the with the forwards on the bench and. Yeah, Stefano, he just led from the front first half. He wasn't as good as the second half, but he was still really solid. And, like, the whole team performed better in the second half, There's, which is there. Um, but, yeah, Stefano, absolute weapon for us there. And he wasn't letting any fatigue, any sort of fatigue from Easter Monday get to him. He just shouldered up and did what he had to do. Oh, yeah, he's unbelievable. Right on to Benji Marshall's press conference. It was a, a three-minute press conference. Him and Appy were up and out of there pretty quickly. But um, here's Benji talking about the effort on Saturday night. Um, again, how resilient we are as a bunch. Um, we, we didn't deserve to win. Uh, like, there's no doubt. But at the same time, given the adversity we had to face um, throughout the game, to be fighting there at the end and give ourselves an opportunity to, to win that game... Um, was a big effort from him. So as a coach, I'm, I'm really proud of the effort. Um, of course we wanted to win, no doubt. And of course we could have played better, but um, there's something you can't coach and that's um, what's in there. Rob, they're definitely, the boys are definitely playing out of their skin and ripping in every week for Benji, despite the fatigue and the factors we're talking about. Benji, they're def- the boys are definitely turning up for Bench. Yeah, it's it's beautiful to see, Josh. I mean, there, there really is a new standard in in how we go about our work on the field. Uh, I guess what Benji's trying to say about we didn't deserve to win is is that probably the Dolphins played with a little bit more control or or, or looked a bit better than us. But I don't I don't think the Dolphins deserve to win. Like, there's a lot of games where you know you can play better and and lose the game. Like we, you know, Gutherson kicks a field goal last week, power win. But I think we were the better team. So. I don't. I don't. I think he meant deserve as in just the Dolphins had the better of general play, but uh, I, I thought our our boys, you know, deserve to win too, given the way we fought. So very, very proud of the team. Very proud of the coach. I, I love. I love the spirit that we're playing. Is this is this is going back to the nineteen eighties for me? The the Tiger spirit, never giving in, always in the game. Uh, you know, we'll discuss it tomorrow. And I'm just concerned about you know how many troops we're going to be missing. Uh, this week for St George, uh, mm. but you know I'm I'm really hoping that the Campbelltown crowd can you know really play as an extra man, put a heap of pressure on the referee, and and just get us that extra penalty or two that might make the difference in winning the game. So again, I just hope everyone gets out there and and remember it's a footy stadium, it's not a library, it's not a church. Don't go there and sit there and stuff your face and drink. Open your mouth and cheer and roar and and bring the boys home on Sunday. 
and the Dragons, they travel well as well, and it's a pretty easy drive for them from Wollongong, so let's not let them dominate the crowd too much. So uh, here is Benji talking about Appy's injury. Yeah, um, again, his leadership in, in our club is um, something that we're all lucky to have, um, and he puts his body on the line every week and just gives everything, and um, he could have taken the easy option and not played today. Very close, but um, yeah, he played for the boys. What happened there? You did the injury in the warm up. Can you tell us what, what happened? Uh, just went for a run, uh, felt something, but yeah, it was probably just carrying on. So obviously, he got through the game. So, think he'll be right for next week? Yeah, I think so. I think so. What's up for your game now? As how much did you notice? Because obviously they talked about it pre-game. Did you notice it that much with Appy? Um, the th- so the thing was, I actually didn't see the pre-game. Or I didn't pay much attention to the pre-game um, until the game started. And just as the game was kicking off, I saw someone in the Discord say, "Oh no, Appy!" And I kind of had a little bit of a moment of panic in there, like, "Oh crap, is Appy not playing?" Um, and then I didn't like. I took a bit of a sigh of relief when I saw Appy um, for the first time on screen. So, yeah, I I didn't really notice at first. Um, I did notice he was wearing the the leg sleeve there, um, so I wasn't sure exactly what was going on. But it did at, after a while. It looked like it was hampering a bit, hampering him a bit. Um, it didn't look too good. Um, and I was very surprised he came back on, but he he turns out to be a little bit of a character in these press conferences, doesn't he? It's got a comment, Chase this is Supreme says, how on earth do we still have press conferences where we can't hear the questions? The microphones are literally under the mouth of the of the guys. So yeah. the journos are like in the they're far away from the microphones. That's why you can't can't hear them. So I mean, do we really need to hear them? I and I, I cut them out because you can't hear them. So I, I just give context to what they're talking about. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh yeah, what they're what they're asking. So is that it? I think that's all we've got there because it wasn't a very long press conferences um you've already mentioned rob we're, we're going to go live tomorrow night so sorry to anyone who yeah had plans for wednesday evening we're going to go one night early um our old mate from the dragons fan base J- jay benz is going to jump on we'll see if he's wearing his sunglasses indoors again but uh boys expecting any changes obviously we'll There'll be some force changes. What are you thinking, As? Yeah, so it's obviously that both Fa- Fainu boys are going to be out. Um, I think one of them is probably going to be replaced by Kepa Oa. Um, I don't know who's going to come in for Latu or how that's going to look. I Yeah, I'd be thinking Talon or Jake Simpkin um, will take a, take a position there because we're a little bit short on like halves slash hooker stocks at the moment um bateman is a little bit of an iffy one i feel like benji might be the kind of coach that errs on the side of caution uh with concussions like i know so i I, i'll clarify for some people who don't know the way the concussion situation works now so there's i think three categories of concussion that can be i guess diagnosed at the game by the independent doctor or whoever it might be. So you've got category one, category two, and category three. If you're declared a category one HIA, which shows obvious signs of concussion, for example, uh, dizziness or unsteadiness on your feet, or um, you remain on the ground, not moving for a considerable amount of time, you're automatically ruled out of the rest of the game and you have to undergo the 11 day uh, concussion protocols, which is 11 days, you can't play first grade or any grade of football. Um, I don't think you're even allowed to train properly, no non-contact training during that 11 days as well. So then you've also got the category two, which is what Bateman was. Um, if you fail a category two, you still have to be monitored for any signs of concussion or any symptoms of concussion where you go into the, the um, 11 day protocols. If you show any of those symptoms, Otherwise, you're eligible to play. So given that he failed the Category 2, like I said, I think Benji might err on the side of caution, um, which I believe is what he did with Alex Twal after the Sharks game. 
Uh, so I, th I think we'll probably be missing Bateman as well, but that'll be a, a play it by ear for uh, when team lists come out tomorrow afternoon. Rob, any thoughts to add? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a bit more selfish than Aaron. Uh, <laughs> given that we're given that we're playing Penrith and the Broncos the next two weeks, I'd play Bateman this week and mate, I'd send him on a three week holiday to England after that. I don't care. We need to beat St George. If we don't beat St George this week, we're looking. I know it's so early in the season, but I feel like we'd be looking at a finishing order of between ninth and seventeenth. I really feel we need to win this week. We need to beat Canterbury in you know another three weeks after that. And that way we'll be sitting on four wins and four losses. We can, we can cop a loss to Penrith. We can cop a loss to Brisbane. Uh, but we need Bateman's experience out there. We, we can't have an edge there with uh, Kapoa. I'm pretty sure Matamu is going to be on the bench. And I'm, I'd be 80% sure that Jake Simpkin will be number 14 tomorrow. I don't think Talon's 100% right. Uh, so, you know, who, who's going to... I, mean, I guess Kapoa would have to start on that left edge if Bateman's there. You're certainly not going to put Safar there. You're not going to put Twal there. Uh, I, I I really don't think we've got much choice. It's a it's it, it's I know it's early in the season, but if we're serious about having aspirations for the finals, we we need to get our best players out there. If and and I know Appy's going to play under a cloud of whatever it is, and and you know I, th I think we need Bateman out there. If Bateman's not there, I I really don't think defensively we'd be able to stop St George because St, St George really do run that shape with their. Uh, backline movements really, really well. They don't do a lot of other things very well, but if you give them field position and they run those block shapes, they're going to score tries. So I, I just we need Bateman out there to help help read with the defence. And um, yeah, I, I just can't see us winning without him. Too many too many young blokes would be coming in there, and, and it'd just be a big ask. Good question from Jackson Freeman on the YouTube. Said, what are your thoughts on? Sam Fafainu getting hit high, the swinging arm, and nothing happening. I think we got a penalty for it, but yeah. But the Roosters player, uh, Dom, Dom Young. Young, was it Dom Young? Dom Young got yeah, set on the field. There wasn't much difference between the two tackles. He's, Jackson's got a point here. I, I agree. If, if if Dom Young was a send off, which some people will say it is, then I've seen another thirty send offs in, a, in mm. a few rounds of footy this year. So I don't think Dom Young swung the arm. I know he came in at 100 miles an hour, but he never actually swung his left arm. He just connected with the head. And, I, and I've seen plenty of shots like that this year already. You know, you, you see three or four a week and they're just put on report or they're put in a sin bin. But again, we've discussed the referee. We we, did, we got a pretty raw deal there. And, and Sam Weller is like a really good, impactful player for us. So to have him come off a minute and a half into the second half was a huge blow to our chances. Just a, just a little bit of a backtrack there before you move on, Josh. There was a yep. Facebook comment from Peter Georgievich earlier. He, uh, he asked me how many games have we won with Sutton as a ref, and I went and found that. So hmm. our record with Jared Sutton as a ref is 16 wins and 28 losses. And just as an extra little bit of info there, that's the fourth game that the Dolphins have, have had Jared Sutton as a ref and the first one that they've won. Wow. I mean, so we've so he was, he was 33%. Due. I mean, we've we've lost, like, the last three years we've lost with every, to everyone. Everyone. <laughs> that, that record so, sounds better yeah. than three, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it actually doesn't sound too bad. So, it, 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 yeah, it... Um, he yeah. started refing in 2009, so there's a decent chance that we might have had a few games with him in those first few seasons where we were actually yeah. playing all right. And obviously, finals in 2010 and 2011, there were probably a fair fair chunk of games we had him in there in his early days. Yes, it's not quite um, in the NBA. What's the ref with Chris Paul? There's a ref with Chris Paul, and he's like 0 and 15 in the playoffs or something. Um, I can't think of his name. I know funny. you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, righto, on to your comments of the week, and a congratulations to Steve, who is our winner of the $50 West Ashfield voucher. Steve, send us an email, podcast at westlife.com, or slide into the DMs on one of our socials, and we'll pass on your details to the lovely marketing team at West Ashfield, and they'll leave a $50 voucher at the counter for you. Who picked it this week? Was as, yeah, as... I, I picked it. Uh, Aaron yeah. actually picked another really good comment. To be fair, there were mm. plenty of really, really good comments, and they're also 
plenty of comments that were bagging the referee, which is hilarious. Yeah. But I, I, I just really love the first half of this comment, more importantly, because it really does show where we are as a team now. I probably quite didn't agree on Fanua about how tough they're playing, although Fanua's metres were really up. I thought I thought Fanua did a couple of things wrong the other night. But, yeah, I, re- I really like this comment. So Steve, Steve said it's encouraging to see the players – uh, accept setbacks and keep a positive mindset. Caesar is a great deputy for Appy when Appy's off the field and keeps the team accountable as well as his momentum turning 40-20s. Steph looks like he's fi- like he finally finally believes in himself as a player and a future leader of the club. Alex and Fanua are playing tough for young blokes, adding depth to the forwards. Sorry, Steve, my reading tonight is um yeah, my button pressing, my reading, not up to scratch this week. I'm having a bit of a Barry Crocker. Um, Mad Ando said, please practice short dropouts, catching and kicking them. It does seem, I don't know if it's just me, but it does seem like we fuck them up. Um, although uh, the short dropout seems like most teams are stuffing them up now. Not many people, I've seen a lot of them go out on the fall uh, lately, so. Maybe we're just expecting to win them all the time. Tom Smith said, we let ourselves down in the first half if we had completed from the start. Our efforts in the second half would have got us the win. The teams bounced back after halftime. Uh, they gave me hope, but some basic errors and a blind ref prevent the comeback. We clearly miss Galvin, but we have a foundation to build on. Hopefully beat the Dragons. Go the Tigers. Dominic Riordan said, Latu Fenu is a beast of a defender. Would love to see him run. The non-penalty to Appy, the Jerry Sutton tax, we always get charged, was a momentum killer, but we lost it in the first half. Given the dis- disruptions to the forwards, losing Bateman and Fenu, there was a lot to like overall. Bev Sutton said, my son Gerard was outstanding, best on ground. I quite like <laughs> that one. Uh, David Nicotra said, although we lost, I did enjoy the fact we kept fighting. It was a backs against the wall stuff tonight and the boys ripped in. I love seeing us move the ball so fast and hit hard. Seems like we haven't had that, that in years. I think we can take more from that loss than our last two wins up the Tigers. Uh, Adam said, I didn't see Gerard Sutton in the man of the match selection, so we'll put him in here as a special mention. We missed Galvin. Latu didn't do much for us. I actually think Sullivan played better than Latu. Injuries, errors, and poor rotation of players due to injury cost us the game. When will we start getting the rub of the green from the refs? 2-0 refs to Tigers. Uh, GD Tiger said, good luck putting a positive spin on that game, boys. Ten errors in the first 40. Attacking, they look so slow. Passing behind each other. Offloads, they couldn't defend. And meters through the ruck for the Finns. The only positive is they didn't put 40 on us. Benji needs to work in his bench rotations. Injuries galore will come mid-season if, not, if it's not figured out. The forwards were gassed. We need TDs, uh, sorry, TDS or Simpkins on the bench. Unfortunately, based on the fans' reactions, Bud is our new Brooks. So disappointing after the first after the past two weeks. We have seen this before. Love the potty. Thank you, GD Tiger. A um, little bit of a negative one. We'd, well, I think we did actually put a bit, plenty of positive spin on this one. But no, he, he's saying good luck putting a positive. Yeah, spin. yeah. So that's, and I'm saying I think I think well, we mate, have. Our goal, I think... our goal line defense was outstanding. I, I, I mm. think. I just want to mention with Latu Fainu, I, I could be, you know, on my own here, but I like that Latu didn't overplay his hand. I think he had 12 metres from memory running, so he didn't he didn't do much. I, I like that little bit of little bit of a shuffle he did for Fata Ape's first try before he got the ball moving out wide. I thought he tackled well. He he wasn't going out there to try and say, look at me, I'm a superstar. He just wanted to be part of the team, fill a role. And just get his feet wet and get used to the structure that Benji wants him to play with. So I really didn't see him do anything wrong. In fact, I'm super impressed with what I saw. Sure, he wasn't doing superstar stuff like Galvin. But for me, there was a lot to like about Latu Fainu. And I'm really excited about his future. 
Bobby Young said, I could write the same thing every week about Appy. He just never gives up. Sick, injured, the team down by heaps. He just never freaking stops. Given that he's always my man of the match, and I use his form to nominate my next best this time, it was Big Steph. Huge second stint, and if he can maintain the rage, he's a shoe in for Origin. Even though we lost, there was still a bit to like. We couldn't have played worse in the first half, and the Dolphins couldn't have played better. I'm sensing this team has a bit of steel about them. Keep it up, boys. Consistency in effort goes a long way to winning games as it keeps you in the fight. Rant over, up the tigers. Uh, oh, Blake, uh, I might, yeah, I'm running out of voice here. I might. <laughs> can can Aaron read it or not? Can you see I that, Alex? Over if you want. Yep, yeah, I can see it. Uh, Blake Gatteringer, cough. Coughlin, I guess. Uh, simple enough, just a slow start. But the fact is we win that game if we put in a full 80. Thought Bateman had a superb game. Uh, or sorry, subpar game. Clemmer injured and Sullivan just ain't Galvin. But overall, how can you argue this effort or heart? Clearly, the Benji era comes with a fresh vibe passion. 14-0 and never gave up. Came out and won the second half. Had a few rough calls against us, but the boys dug in. Aiden Caesar, what can I say? He is a godsend. Scott Pryde. Prince type of leadership vibes for this club. Appy and Buller, amazing as always, but my man of the match is Big Steph. What the hell did they inject him with this offseason? Even Twal, Pole, and Fainu. Where has this aggression, strength, and speed in the front line come from? Stefano has taken a huge step up this year and deserves a blue jersey so far. Overall, we simply aren't giving up. We are playing with pure heart and passion, and I haven't been this excited after an opening month since 2011. This side is giving me 2017-18 Panthers vibes. Just need to get games under their belt, but you can sense something special is coming. Geez, you'd think we just won. Can't remember the last time I was so pumped after a loss. Ha ha, up the Tigers. Keep up the passion, gents. Love that comment. Mm, it's a good one. On you, Blake. Uh, Chris W said, still desperately lacking a 13 who can ball play, connect both sides of the field. Polly, Twal, and Safe Arthur, not the answer. Um Noons, I'll send you his email later if you want to have a crack at him. Uh, Shane Cohet said, the first half is where we lost the game. Too many errors. We will learn from this. We have to remember there are a lot of kids in the side. That is true. They're still a very young. Uh, Steph's only Steph's still only 23, I think. Uh, they are still fine-tuning their craft. We really need to give Staines the ball with more room for him to move. We also need to manage Appy. I fear we will burn him out. We need to see everyone at Campbelltown next week at least 14,000 just get there 100% fill the place. And Stuart Sampson, the boys dug deep to fight back second half. Huge momentum swinger from Sutton. Pardon me, I'm running. Uh, 54th minute. At least the Tigers kept fighting. Good sign, even in defeat. 21, 2, and 3 Tigers would have capitulated and got flogged. If it's all, if that's all the Dolphins have got when the odds are stacked heavily in their favor, we'll beat them on the return game. Uh, where do we play them again, As? Uh, the Dolphins, we've got them in Magic Round, so back at Suncorp. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Riff Raff said, I said it in the Discord, but it's worth letting the masses know as confirmed by stats man Aaron. Big Red came on in the 29th minute. If the game started at that point, we win. Hashtag <laughs> safer <laughs> facts. Uh, good on you, there's a, common, there's a common theme, Josh, about, you know, we lost it in the first half. We lost it in the first half. We certainly played a lot better in the second half. I, I think this whole culture has changed, guys. We're never out of the game anymore. We, we don't lose anything in the first half. We're good enough to win games in the second half. So let's let's stop saying we lost it in the first half. That means that if we play bad, we can't come back. We, we can come back from any situation now. We're just, you know, if you make an error, you just put it aside, move on, next play. So I, I really think, you know, the boys have got that attitude and they never give up. And that's why we, we almost look like we were going to turn that game in our favour. So, so enough with the we lost it in the first half. You can say we played better in the second half. But we're not losing anything in the first half anymore. We can always win the game. Hmm. These days, fourteen nil in one half is is a very simple comeback. It's it doesn't take all that much effort. Um, well, it takes a bit, obviously, but not as much hmm. as it probably used to. And it, yeah, it's one of those, I guess, smaller deficits that you can you can still manage to come back from. And if one team can score fourteen points in one half, and if you don't score any, then you just have to score at least fifteen in the next half, which is still three tries. It's it's not that bad. So. Yep. Yeah, I agree with Rob. 
just got to score more points than the other team, you've got a good chance of winning. Uh, Alexandros, he said, Sutton, absolute piece of shit. Dolphins were beatable tonight. Our first half was terrible. A lot of what of a lot of what ifs may have changed the result. What if Bud slips through the line past the hammer? What if Steph hangs on to the ball as he powers through the hammer? What if Sutton is in a fuck card and blows the penalty for Marker not being square and doesn't double down on the strip being ruled a knock on? What if the what if they go left instead of Bullock throwing a crash ball to Papa, who was well covered? Good night, uh, Alexandros. <laughs> was fired up yeah. when he sent that through. Uh, Chris said, errors, errors, errors. How fucking dumb can we be sometimes? Not helped by the atrocious refereeing, but really miss Galvin straightening the attack. Sullivan did okay, but wants something more next week for the starting team. Otherwise, we would be two, two and three and wondering what if. Magpie Nate... Uh, it's the last one. Okay. A man, Latu Fainu, really looked good today. Was very impressed. Wasn't expecting 5-8 from the big boy. I love that Bateman has a dog in him, but can he can bite us in the ass. Uh, other than Staines letting one through, he helped Fatape get the scary try for some really needed momentum. Keen for Staines to be truly unlocked to 100%. Caesar salad kick was great, other than some bombs, some short bombs. And lastly, good seeing Naden on the bench. Love his work. Hope he gets some more shots in the near future. Thanks for all your comments. There's so many good varied ones that it was hard to leave out so many. Yeah, just, while you're doing um, that, I, I, sorry, uh, Aaron, I just want to mention too, like a lot of people are saying, why didn't Naden come on and why didn't Clemmer come back on? Uh, apparently, we'd run out of interchanges with 18 minutes left. So yeah. we, we, we kind of, we obviously, you know, we've, we've botched the interchange up, but to be fair, there was a lot of, you know, sort of dishevelment going on with, with everything, with injuries and, and head knocks and, and what have you. So if anyone's wondering why Naden never came on or why Clement ever came back on, that's the reason we'd run out of interchanges with 18 minutes left. I agree with Shane Coward about um, Charlie Staines on the wing. Like once we gave him some space, we saw what he could do. He made a, a nice little run down the sideline and, through an inside ball to Fata Ape, but mm. those are few and few and far between. But you know, I, you know, it's a work in progress, guys. Like I said, it's it's only their third game together, and that was a beautiful pass from uh, Papa Lee to to get Staines in the clear. Ben Angus made a good point. If uh, Donahue was sin binned, they would have been allowed to. Well, um, he was actually allowed regardless anyway, because as soon as you have two failed HIAs, the eighteenth man can be activated, and a category one HIA counts as a failed. So with Stefano. Uh, not sorry, with Bateman being ruled out at half time, that's the first one. And then the category one for Sam Weller, uh, Naden could have been activated. But just on that as well, Vossi said in commentary um, in the first half, in like 28 minutes or 30 something minutes or whatever it was, we had used all four of our bench players after only using two of them in the whole mm. game last week. So, yeah, having to use your four interchanges in the first half, you're always going to be a little bit behind the eight ball when it comes to interchanges in the second half, which I think makes the little comeback we made all the more impressive. And, and even with that Easter Monday game too, Aaron, like we only used 15 players, but we only used six of our eight interchanges. We actually had two spare exactly. interchanges. Mm. I wish we could have moved them on to last Saturday night against the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah, shame, had, yeah had, shame they can't carry over. <laughs> yeah, carry him over for the, five, so. for the five day turn the five day turnaround rule. Take your take your leftover interchanges and have them available in the next game. Yeah. Uh, tipping wise, as you got six good round for you last week. Rob, you got five. I only got four. Should look back in the boys. It uh, didn't work for me. My first incorrect tip for the West Tigers this year. Uh, right, New South Wales Cup. As you and I, we watched this game. Well, the second half of this game. Look, the Magpies, they were well and truly yeah, out-muscled by the North Sydney Bears, 42-16, at a very packed North Sydney Oval for this game. As Yeah, I I was quite impressed to see the crowd. Um, don't know what the crowd figure was, but they, they never really mentioned that. But, uh, yeah, like you have a look at some of the names on the North Sydney Bears um, scoring sheet there. Uh, mm. Nelson is so for Solomona is probably the big standout when you've got a a guy like Big Nelson in your forward pack, you're going to dominate probably almost every reserve grade pack out there. Um, and that was the case uh, for the game. He was strong. He was tough. He he bullied our players. Uh, 
got sin binned as well towards the end of the game, but they still had done more than enough by that point to beat us. Um, Dean Eremaya, another player in the Storm system. They had a lot of players. I, they're a, a Storm feeder team now, I believe. So they had a few Storm players in their system um, and playing this game. So they were really strong. They were really good. They were really powerful. And yeah, we just got out-muscled and outmatched from what I saw. Yeah, yeah. Some of the tries were pretty, uh, pretty embarrassing. So they're sitting down in eleventh uh, with one win and three losses uh, in the lower grades. So none. I don't think we had any teams play elsewhere uh, because the Harold Mats Magpies they have a week off this week and will play next week um, against. The how did you explain it last week? Yeah, so they they finished top two, and so the three to six play, and the Bulldogs will get to play the higher, the lower ranked of the winners, and the Magpies the higher ranked of the winners. That's did I explain that yep. correctly? That's pretty much uh, how that works. Yep. Uh, Lisa Fiola, they played in those girls this play week. their finals this week on Saturday. Like card we'll preview those tomorrow night super chats saw two super chats come through big thank you um chris chris carl's beak sent us a 20 a fresh lobster 20 bucks didn't even need to leave a comment with it he just threw us 20 bucks just because he loves us good on you chris um well uh brandon w threw us eight bucks as well he said let's raise a glass for golden boots this weekend bail keith barnes it's a good point uh, I tweeted out today on the Westlife Twitter. I wonder what the club will do. They obviously Tommy Radonikus got the uh, the tribute jer- jersey, so maybe they will do a um, yeah a, a 60s Balmain style one um, in the coming weeks. Obviously, it's, it takes a a little while to get all that through. But um, Rob, what do you think they should do? For a tribute oh, to oh, well, the, the first thing they're going to do is a minute silence for sure on the on oh Sunday. of course yeah no, no doubt about that uh, look I I'd like to, I know we don't have a game at Leichhardt for a couple of months but I'd kind of like that to be some sort of tribute to Keith Barnes maybe maybe call it you know the Keith Barnes Day or whatever and just have a Keith Barnes theme about it maybe have a standing ovation after one minute because he's our greatest number one uh you know that certainly Balmain never had and especially mm-hmm. being at Leichhardt uh his favourite ground. So, look, there, there's many things. I'm, I'm sure Richo and the crew will come up with the right way to give him a tribute. But uh, I, I don't think um, I don't think Barry O'Farrell will be strutting around with a number one Balmain jersey, uh, <laughs> wear, wearing a fedora on his head, looking like a fool. So, uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure that won't be happening. Uh Patreon time, patreon.com forward slash Westlife. I think the guys dropped a few things in the Discord. So if you want to take part in the show, uh, Patreon, yeah, patreon.com forward slash Westlife. And I'll DM you the Discord link. What have the guys got for us this week as I open it up? And while you're trying to find them, Josh, just a little plug yep. for the Discord for those who are interested in joining it. If, so, yeah, if you become a Patreon, you can join. At the moment, we seem to have a lot of little fan clubs building up for some of the players. So, uh, yeah, the possibility of joining joining one of the the, aren't they a the fan clubs under the founders. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't pick a favorite because they always break my heart. But uh, Amazon Girl, aka Carla, no excuses. We lost that due to subpar effort first first half performance. What was pleasing was the fight back in the second. We'll learn from this and be better next week up the Tigers. Shane Cowett said, we played like assholes in the first half and that lost us a game. I'm so sick of Tupo getting the ball with a ton of space in front of him and uh, because he's such a plotter, he never makes use of it. I feel like Tupo's run the ball back all right this year. Um, He's done a lot of tackle busts, Josh, but I know what he's referring to. There was a a moment in the second half where Buller throws the cutout ball and Tupu's just got oodles of space and mm. he doesn't even get like three or four metres. And all you have to do is, you know, go back and watch Friday night and watch Brisbane and Melbourne in the first half and you see Tristan Saylor throw that same ball to Jesse Arthurs and he's flying down the sideline. So we, we're really missing some speed. Like if that, if, that, if that same person was Charlie Staines, you know, something was on there. But because it's Junior Tupu, he just, he, 
looked like, I don't know if he was injured or something, but he just looked really slow, which is quite surprising because he ran down, you know, uh, Katoa, the, the Cronulla winger at Leichhardt with, along with Jareen Buller really quickly a couple of weeks ago. So I, I don't know if he was carrying an injury, but he just looked really, really slow uh, on Saturday night. Uh, he also said Staines never gets the amount of gets this amount of room with the ball. I'd swap them over. We always struggle against the fast sides. We are very vulnerable when a team puts the ball into the in goal as our back line have the turning circle of the Titanic. Uh, Samuela Fainu fan club said, uh, so I'm at the point now, I don't even know who everyone is because I get the change their name. But anyway, the Tigers of old would have crumbled and lost by 40. The Tigers of you are a resilient side who fight to the very end. Didn't expect us to win tonight, given the short turnaround and most likely going to struggle next week with the players out. But the team is different this year. Benji is the man. Uh, Big Red Fan Club, aka Riff Raff, said, Bud played all right and had some nice moments. Feel like he's becoming the new Brooks to fans. He's only 22. Need to cut him some slack. Hope he has a blinder against South. Uh, ben Ellis said, has Benji learned his lesson in moving Caesar from the right side? As Caesar seemed to be the right side for the first half and left for the second. Who should our left side half be this weekend? Good question. We'll discuss it tomorrow night. Yeah. Oh, good tease. <laughs> um, righto. Tomorrow night. We will preview the Dragons game with uh, with Jay Benz coming on. Do our tips and Rob Stradamus. Actually, Rob Stradamus, we haven't even mentioned that. Absolutely on fire lately and picked a the uh, oh, twenty what a pain the end twenty two dollar winner. Um, yeah, twenty three dollar. The best long shot got up. Chain of Rob Lightning. Uh, twenty three dollars, which was really good, and I thought we were going to have an even bigger weekend. Our our same game multi, uh, we got the first two try scorers in the North Queensland game, and we had to wait sixty five minutes to see whether Tom Dearden could could score. And uh, yeah, I was kicking myself because it was really out of Dearden and Drinkwater, and I stupidly went Dearden and Drinkwater got a double, so um, nice got got two out of three. So yeah, depending on where you had your bet, you know, you might have got mm. something out of that or not. What about uh, Winx's uh, Philly? We've got Philly? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know. Ten, I don't know. Ten million bucks. Crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, crazy. Um, righto. Anything else to add, boys, before it was a long one? Even the losses were going 100 minutes long, but, yeah, so much to talk about. Uh, just, we appreciate Just what we've got to do tomorrow night, that's all. Uh, unfortunately, I'm mm. on the way for three days uh, Got a friend's wedding uh, up in the Hunter Valley, so we can't. I can't do Wednesday night, so we're going to do the preview show tomorrow night, and uh, I'll I'll we'll get out some Rob Stradamus tips later in mm. the week, probably about Thursday, Friday, and give uh, yep. give the Hunters plenty of time. Yep, keep an eye on the socials. As anything to add before we uh, head off? Can't play the team song this week because we obviously <laughs> didn't sing it. Yep, I'm, ju I'm just going to say something that I'm going to echo tomorrow night as well. Um, I just hope there are some people out there who haven't seen us losing this game as a reason to not head out to Campbelltown if you were already mm. planning on doing it this weekend. Um, I truly believe that this team deserves our full support. Uh, and if we're still able to get out there, um, see this change that Benji's making happen for ourselves and just support the team, like... Yeah, we're probably still going to have a tough year at times. There are going to be some losses that we should probably win and some wins that we should probably lose, but that's part of the part of the game. But, yeah, if you were still planning on heading to Leichhardt before the loss but are considering changing your mind, I implore you to still get out there, still fill both hills, uh, fill the grandstands, fill everything, and let's make it a, a Sunday Arvo to remember. Yeah, we'll be there. And just quietly, if you use the code WT Sullivan to 2024 on Ticket Tech, you'll get a um, member's discount for the tickets. So get your tickets, get out there. We'll be there. We'll preview it tomorrow night. Boys, thank you for another evening. Look, I think you boys absolutely killed it. We didn't play, um, in case you missed it, here's Rob's. Roberto on Channel 7 tonight. Ability to slot the ball over the black dot. Balmain boys don't cry. I think there's a lot of Balmain boys who are crying today. Keith played. 
Good on you, Rob. It was only seven seconds. Not, no, not even. I think it was about four seconds. But you absolutely <laughs> got it today on the uh, Channel 7 News. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you for Channel 7 for having us on. So, um, yeah, again, we send our condolences and love to the Barnes family. 100%. And we will see you again next time on another West Life podcast. As always, uh, yeah, as Keith Barnes always passionately did himself, go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Thanks for listening to another episode of the West Life Podcast. Please follow us at West Life Pod on Instagram and Twitter and facebook.com forward slash West Life Pod. You can also support and take part in the show at patreon.com forward slash West Life and give us a subscribe on YouTube and turn notifications on. We'll see you again next time on another episode of the West Life Podcast. Mm-hmm.